Right, I'm heading up there and in my pack here is the MSR Tindheim 2. I've taken the poles out so it's a more compact package. Have a look at them. Just behind me there is Alls Water and over here is Go Barrow Fell where doubtless the National Trust faithful have been flocking today but these fells small as they are and slightly more to the west are absolutely lovely and tonight promises a freshening breeze and you can see behind me tonight the building clouds strong rain so we'll see how the tin dime does on this first wild camp with it for me and make sure you watch this video all the way through have a look at the performance of the tent because tomorrow night this is a two-nighter I'm expecting to switch tents and be out in the Nor tent Verd 2 so that'll be a really interesting comparison right let's get up to the top Right, without further ado, let's get this tent up. That's the kind of size it squashes down to. I've been here before, a couple of years ago, I was here with my son, and uh, we saw a wild wallaby just over there. Either that, it, it was a hare hare that was four foot tall with a stiff tail that long. Like the new hat? Rhymes with, looks like it. So I'm not gonna go too much into detail about the tent. If you look at the previous video I did, that was the first pitch and uh, I went into a lot of detail on the tent. This is just about what it's like to live in. Right, that's blowing between 15 and 20 and uh, I'm quite happy with that pitch seems pretty nice so MSR include 14 pegs and I bought some more because it requires 16 for this basic pitch but they also include a couple of extra attachment points and extra guidelines guidelines I beg your pardon so really this tent requires 18 pegs but it looks pretty good so MSR include a nice long guy line for this key one but the extra guy lines they include uh, could have been a little bit longer really to get like a longer pull across that top ridge I think that makes a little bit of difference and what I've elected to do is uh, double peg all these key ones along here like this one and this one come on in, in your bed in you go, in your bed good good dog how is that? you quite compliment this tent don't you? colour wise so I guess what the problem is with this pitch now is I've got a significant loss of porch space did you know that vestibule is also the medical word for a swollen vein on your scrotum? Look it up, it's in the medical dictionary. And then the trade-off is I've got a nice full space there, so lose a bit on storage and cooking space there, but gain at the foot end. It's going to be like that with any tunnel tent really, swings and roundabouts. At first I thought this was going to be way over the top space-wise. I quite like it. Quite nice for one person, having a bit of space. Quite a breeze coming in from there. It would be nice, as I previously said, to be able to shut that down. That's quite a wind. It's going to be interesting to see later on, when it rains, if I'm getting any drippage coming through there. 
Now that I'm all cosy, this gives me a chance to answer a couple of questions from people who very kindly commented on the first video. So one young lady wanted to know how much it tapered down at the bottom end. Well, I can firmly answer that it, it tapers down to six cans of Wainwright. And to the young man who commented that he felt it was rather dull inside, uh, the only difference I could probably make would be gold encrusted Rolex motifs around because it's an absolutely beautifully luxurious interior. I mean, look at that. It comes with an ermine carpet and everything. Cheers, Alfred. Thanks for helping me to get my kids up into the hills by providing a canny list of beautiful places. Just the one. So for those of you that like to know, tonight I've got the Etherlite XT insulated and the Van Gogh Vulcan minus 12. The minus seven to me is a sleeping bag for summer. I've got a Van Gogh Thermo pillow. It's the deep sleep Thermo and the ubiquitous Quetcher pillow. Right. And a furry dog to cuddle up to. Can't get these from Go Outdoors. So, if I've never told you the story about Honey, she was a, a rescue dog, and there's a fabulous charity in the northeast that brings over dogs from kill shelters in Romania. And we went to this kennels looking for a second dog. My wife's idea, we needed another dog, and I thought, you what? But this little scruff, who actually generally is very cautious with strangers, in this chaos of all these dogs running around, she just came straight up to me and just put a muzzle in my hand like that and just stopped there, still as anything looking at me, just like I've been waiting for you to come. She was a little skinny thing, apparently been found by some bins when she was a couple of months old, taken to a kill shelter and then uh, rescued by this charity and we got her from when she was brought over to the UK when she was five months old. Wow, it's a lot warmer in here. It's the end of July and the wind's blowing a steady 20 out there and uh, with the temperature just at 10, that's making it six degrees out there. Pretty chilly, so I'm in for the night now, but I'm pretty happy with how the tent is uh, standing up. There's no variation in the movement at all. Seems pretty secure. So it's all about getting out there, isn't it? And uh, getting to know your, your kit. I mean, how many times do you think you have to camp in different conditions to really get to trust your equipment in, in your tent? Let me know in the comments below that how much you feel you, that you really need to get out of a tent and what variation you need to be in before you think, right, I'm not even going to think about it now. I trust this tent. So I'm just learning and growing with this tent and I'm pretty happy so far in. Really. Feels like a cozy place to be. Oh, let's get inside. Good morning. 
it's not been a bad night. They, I think the best thing about the tent was the l lack of flapping of the material. I've had a good night's sleep. To be fair, it's only still half past four. <laughs> There's a bit of rain on the outside of the tent there, but no condensation on the inner or outer. I had the inner tent completely zipped up last night, but I think there was a fair through draft coming through, right through the top of the tent. So that breeze continues to blow and despite the sound of the wind in the guys, what else can you hear? Nothing, no flopping and with the rain in the night the fabric didn't particularly slacken so very little flapping, brilliant. So on this first night in the Tinheim tube, what's been the pros and cons? So I would say the pros have been the quietness in the material and the space in the inner. The cons have been relatively easy pitching except for getting those poles in the, in the grommets. I found that a right struggle last night. But other than that, if that settles down, that will be fine. And the other con is the vestibule is not super roomy. Once you've got a pack in there and the wind's blowing it down a little bit, so it'll be fine for cooking. But otherwise, very little to complain about really. Really nice place to be. Right, that's me packed up, ready to go. And that's the tent with only four pegs in now and about a five to 10 mile an hour, that is, that breeze. Just pegs at the end standing up fine. So we're just going to get a spot of breakfast before we take the, take the tent down, just letting it dry a little bit. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Don't forget to watch the second part and we'll do a little bit of the compare. So I hope you're having a great summer. Thanks for watching.